The year was 2012 and Manchester gangster Dale Cregan was named as the trigger man in a series of murders that shocked the city. Cregan was already wanted for murder, when he made a hoax phone call to police in a bid to lure male officers to a house so that he could gun them down. However, two female police officers responded to the fabricated crime scene, they were Manchester officers PC Fiona Bone and PC Nicola Hughes. In order to understand what compelled Dale Cregan to lure and then kill two police officers, you need to hear about the events that led up to the shocking double murder. Described as callous and cold, Cregan had grown up in the city of Manchester, United Kingdom. Like with any big city, specific underworld figures control the sale and distribution of illegal substances and rackets from within the community. East Manchester, specifically the area of Droylsden, is no different. It has been said that Dale Cregan was a hired muscle for the Atkinson crime family in Droylsden. The Short and Atkinson crime families had been controlling the illicit economy for many years but a recent feud between them had resulted in a great deal of animosity, anger and bitterness rising. Without a doubt, this feud was destined to boil over and since we're dealing with criminals, violence is never too far away. Two Droylsden families, the Shorts and the Atkinsons, effectively ruled the community and had everyone living there under fear. Fueled by the desire to earn millions, take power and maintain a reputation, it has been said that a petty dispute had turned deadly. It should be mentioned that there had already been issues between the families dating back to the early 2000s. In 2010, the families had been at peace, shaking hands at a local shopping center. However, the peace treaty came crashing down in 2012. The matriarch of the Atkinson family had been disrespected by an associate of the Short family. The matriarch as we'll refer to her as, had made sexually suggestive comments whilst drinking at the Cotton Tree Pub in Droylsden. Alcohol makes people do crazy things and before you knew it, the Short family associate had been bottled and the matriarch had been backhanded. The matriarch had already phoned her sons to tell them about her eventful night down at the pub. They then called Cregan to inform him of the situation. He was asked to help take care of business. Cregan had a reputation for violence, and he was ready to apply pressure to the Short family. Well-known Droylsden criminals Mark and David Short were drinking at the same pub in Droylsden. A masked shooter entered the pub before closing time and began firing. A group of people were targeted, with the shooter hitting four people, including Mark Short. Three men were left critically injured but Mark was the only person who was fatally wounded. It would later be learned that the intended target of the attack, David Short, was in the toilet at the time of the shooting. He was forced to watch in horror as his son died on the pub floor. An investigation was launched and police were confident that eyewitnesses drinking at the pub were fully aware as to the identity of the masked shooter. Droylsden is a small community and those drinking at the pub all knew one another, they were regulars. However, many people who gathered there were involved in crime and wouldn't be willing to cooperate with Manchester police because of fear of reprisal attacks toward themselves and their loved ones. This was going to be a long and difficult case to crack, as nobody was going to be forthcoming with police, which meant that penetrating the criminal element in Droylsden was going to be next to impossible. Even with a lack of cooperation, the police and criminal underworld are intertwined. Many police are related to gang members and they are successful when it comes to learning information, obtaining intelligence and getting the tea from informants. People talk and gossiping would prove beneficial to the Mark Short murder case. The myth of standing strong and not cooperating only holds true to the hardcore gangsters but most people are simply regular people, who may dabble in a little bit of criminal activity. They are not killers who value the street code. They are going to say something. 31-year-old Dale Cregan's name was put forth as having likely been responsible and he was arrested at Manchester Airport, having just returned home to Britain from Thailand. Police had intel that he was the gunman and believed that Cregan had flown to Thailand right after the murder to celebrate the killing of Mark Short. Manchester police knew him well because he was a local Droylsden dealer. Cregan's occupation listed him as a plasterer but police knew that this was Cap. He was raking it in, at one stage he was making £20,000 per week. They also knew that Cregan hated David Short, who was his main gangland rival. Dale Cregan was easy to spot because of his memorable face. He only has one eye and funnily enough, he said that he'd lost his other eye in a street fight, during a different holiday in Thailand. This story is probably a lie. Dale Cregan was interrogated but didn't incriminate himself. Police had little evidence to go on and without anything substantial, they had to let him go. Released on bail, Cregan hit the streets with the same ruthless aim in mind, take out David Short. As mentioned, David Short was just as much of a criminal as Dale Cregan. It has been revealed that following the murder of his son, David threatened to kidnap, our word and then burn Cregan's four-year-old son. This very specific threat is troubling to say the least. It goes to show you the non-existence of morals that many of these gangsters have. Lack of any moral compass aside, 
All of this is unconfirmed information and the accuracy of it isn't clear. Regardless of what was said, Cregan was hellbent on getting rid of this rival gangster. David Short had already been into it with Cregan's allies for years and his time on Earth was coming to a close. Dale Cregan and an accomplice waited for the right opportunity to strike. They watched as David Short unloaded furniture in his driveway. The gangster was caught lacking in broad daylight, with Cregan and his accomplice chasing him through his house and out into an alleyway. Having killed him, Cregan then chucked a grenade at his body, turning his body into a bloody mess of human flesh. It was later learned that both men had attempted to catch David at a nearby cemetery, whilst he routinely visited his son's gravesite. When this plan didn't come to fruition, they went to a place where they knew he'd be. David Short was now dead and Cregan apparently hopped into a getaway car and fist bumped the driver to mark the joyous occasion. He was over the moon with happiness following the premeditated broad daylight hit and had the best sleep of his life that evening. Dale Cregan was named as the man wanted in connection with the murders of Mark and David Short. A broad daylight shooting and use of a hand grenade probably didn't help Cregan stay under the radar. In short time, police had gathered CCTV surveillance, which showed Cregan casually walking down the street with a handgun and no mask. He had demonstrated a recklessness that hadn't been seen before. He had even thrown a grenade at a different crime scene after the murder of David. What the heck was he thinking? Now the most wanted man in Britain, Cregan laid low with the help of his criminal connections. Gang members were even taking down 50,000 pounds wanted posters of him in Droylston. Nobody wanted to speak to police now that he'd killed two notable gangsters. He was unpredictable, armed and exceedingly dangerous. Whilst on the run for the two murders, Cregan's family were being harassed by Manchester police and he wasn't happy with the treatment. This could explain why he took the steps that he did. A call to a burglary was reported and two female police officers were dispatched to the address. What they didn't know was that the family inside had been home invaded the night before and were being held hostage. Most police officers are not armed in the UK and the two female coppers only had police issued tasers equipped. Sadly, they likely believed that the culprit had already fled the scene. No intelligence suggested that Cregan was a real threat to Manchester police or that he had even set up an ambush. However, it is surprising to learn that even a month after David's ambush-style murder, Manchester police weren't anticipating Cregan popping up to cause them harm. They were harassing his close family, something that David Short had done and paid the ultimate price for. Police emergency. I heard someone just threw a big concrete slab through that window and ran off. Of the house or a car? What are we talking? No, sorry, in the back window, in the house. In the house. What's the address there, please? 30 Abbey Gardens, Motion. Did you see them? Seen one, yeah. Do you know them? No, I don't know. Okay, did they, do you know why they've done it? I haven't got a clue. Okay. Is it a rear window, did you say? Yeah, it's in the back garden. Your name, please? Adam. What's your second name, Adam? Archery. Right, I'll get an officer up there, have a look around, see if they can see anybody similar, and then they'll come and see you. All right, Adam. How long would it take? Do you know, roughly, I know that it's fucking, it's not that serious. But... Well, because it's just happened, it's gone in on the priority, so that's within the hour, certainly. But uh, okay. they'll try and get up there as soon as, if there's a possibility, he's still knocking about. All right, then, thanks very much. Okay. I'll right. wait, uh, I'll be waiting. All, all right. right, all right, Adam. All right, bye-bye. 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 As the two newly joined members of Greater Manchester Police walked up to the address, Cregan burst through the front door with a Glock handgun. Cregan had money, therefore he could afford better firearms than most average criminals. The Glock pistol had an extended magazine and the female officers never stood a chance. Shockingly, Dale Cregan then dropped his handgun at the scene and drove to a police station to turn himself in. It is baffling to contemplate why he didn't end his life or why he felt as though prison was his best option. I'm sure that having a reputation was more important to him. With four people deceased, Dale Cregan and people connected to the family feud were imprisoned. Everyone received hefty sentences and Cregan received a whole life tariff because of the brutality of his crimes. Sometimes criminals come along and they just don't care about the consequences. Dale Cregan was that guy. He was definitely a standout when it came to crime, being that he was the first criminal to use hand grenades in brazen, daylight attacks. Now, Dale Cregan sits in high security prison.